Get serious. Redeeming the Time Brothers podcast, a podcast by Gene Kissinger and Norman Kissinger, two brothers who spent their lives in ministry and raising large families. Our desire is to provide a digital place for those who long to belong. And as always, we want to leave a nightlight on for that nightlight is out of the Old Testament book of Nehemiah, one of the greatest books of leadership ever written. Listen to what it says in Nehemiah chapter 1, verse 3 through 5. And they said unto me, The remnant that are left of the captivity there in the province are in great affliction and reproach. The wall of Jerusalem also is broken down, and the gates thereof are burned with fire. And it came to pass, when I heard these words, that I sat down and wept and mourned certain days, and fasted and prayed before the God of heaven. And I said, I beseech thee, O Lord God of heaven, the great and terrible God that keepeth covenant and mercy for them that love him and observe his commandments." Nehemiah is broken by what is happening in Jerusalem. He's devastated by it, and it shows in his prayers that he wants God to do something about it. He's passionate. The Bible says, the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. It doesn't say the wimpy, lackluster mumbling of a of a indolent, lazy man availeth much. It's talking about somebody that's pouring it out before God in prayer. Do you need something from God? Do you need him to move in some specific area in your life? Cry out to God. And and I mean get passionate before God. Get on your face before God. Tremble before God. Run out of words when you're praying before God. Somehow let God know that you're passionate about this thing. Because God doesn't just want you uh, using vain repetition or empty words. He wants those words to mean something. He wants your heart to talk to his heart about the situation that you're interceding for. So man, you got kids that need to be saved, touch the throne of heaven with passion. You need your marriage healed, touch the throne of God with pa- passion. You, you need resource, touch the throne of God with passion. You need mental healing and, and, and relief from anxiety, touch the throne of God with passion. Listen to what R.A. Toria, a, a past master of spiritual warfare said. He said, we hear much in our day about the rest of faith, but there is such a thing as the fight of faith in prayer as well as in effort. Those who would have us think that they have attained to some sublime height of faith and trust because they never know any anguish or conflict or uh, or prayer have surely gotten beyond their Lord and beyond the mightiest victors of God, both in effort and prayer, in that the ages of Christian history have known. When, when we learn to come to God with an intensity of desire that rings the soul, then shall we know a power in prayer that most of us do not know. Prayer should be a passionate outpouring of our heart, not an empty ritual that we follow. Let's pray. Dear Lord God, I agree on earth as touching the need that my friends have as they come before you right now. God, we acknowledge our wimpiness in prayer. Lord, so many times we have merely mumbled words rather than praying a prayer to you. God, I thank you that you have given us the intensity of passion. I pray that you'd help us to use it wisely instead of frittering it away on the vain things of this world. Allow us, God, to become deeply concerned and broken over the spiritual state of men and women around us about the needs of our friends and family members. God, help us to become passionate men and women of prayer who touch your very throne with our prayer life. Forgive us, God, for... Lord, for being empty and vacuous. Help us to rest tonight. Draw us close to your heart. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, God bless you. I love you, but Jesus loves you so much more. Have a great night.